Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit and welcome back to another pen review video. This is another really special pen review uh, because it's of a pen you probably will never find, <laughs> which makes it less of a review and more of a, hey, I just want to show you about this neat pen. So a while back, you may remember, I did a review of the Merlin 33. So this is the Merlin 33. It's a little pen, Dutch made pen. This is in the purple web celluloid. And uh, it is, it's a wonderful writer, uh, really nice little button filler, nice semi-flex nib, but it's a small pen. Um, there's not a lot known about Merlin pens. This was kind of a, not a top tier maker in its time, which was back in the 40s. Um, but there was a big cache of them that came onto the market several years ago. Um, and so you can find, especially the Merlin 33s, you can find a lot of them about. There are a couple of other Merlin models as well. I think the Osmi is one. There's another one I'm not familiar with. And then there's uh, a model called the Merlin Triumph. And uh, one of my viewers, Mike, who watches the, the show, and I'm, I'm just switching my, my paper here to the right page, make sure I have all the right information. Uh, one of my viewers, Mike, um, got you know, I think he saw one of my reviews, either that or he was just looking for Merlin pens, I don't know. Found a Merlin 33, found one of the other Merlin models, and then he found a Merlin Triumph. Now, this is a very rare pen. You don't see a lot of them out there. As far as he has been able to determine, this is pretty much one of the only documented models that we're aware of out there. Uh, it's a neat pen, it's a great writer, uh, it's small, as are really all of the Merlin pens, but it's a neat one. So I wanted to do a quick review of... Re 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 try that again. <laughs> Take two. Wanted to do a quick review of the pen to show you how it writes, show you a little bit about it. So if you happen to be out and about and come across one of these little beauties, even if it's not in great shape, grab it, because this is a very, very rare pen. So let's go through the design. So this is the Merlin Triumph. Got a rounded kind of plastic finial, metal, very streamlined, you know, uh, brass clip, very stiff. It says Merlin on the body of the clip there. It's got this really neat celluloid, kind of a black and white celluloid with a lot of pearlescence in the, the white portions of the celluloid. Uh, the body tapers down to a fairly standard rounded tip here, and it says Merlin Triumph, and then EF for, I'm assuming, extra fine um, on the, the embossing there. Now, one of the things that makes this a neat pen is this is a piston filler, as opposed to the Triumph, which I'll bring over here, was a button filler. You, you unscrewed the blind cap and used the button to fill the pen. This is a piston filler, but... Unlike the, the there's, it's a blind cap. This isn't actually the filler knob. It's a blind cap, and then the filler knob is underneath, which is kind of, which is a little unusual. You don't see that very much. Uh, once you take the cap off, one of the other things that makes this a very interesting pen is it's a hooded nib. You don't see a lot of these in pens from this era, except for the Parker 51, really. And... Um, it has a nice ink window here, which is see-through. It's filled with a dark ink, so you can't tell, but it's got this nice kind of, I don't know if I can, swirly design on it, so you can actually see if your ink level is getting low. But you'll notice in the hand, it's a very small pen. Um, it, you know, it, I usually hold it right up here because this is just too narrow for me and way too close to the nib tip for me to write at a, a normal angle, so I write here. And if I write holding it up around the ink window, I have to post the pen. So the pen does post. I'm not going, I don't post it very hard because this is celluloid and it's an old material. So you want to be careful about that. Now, for those of you, I've talked about this a little before, but for those of you who aren't familiar, celluloid is a material that used to be used a lot in pen construction, is used occasionally now in some higher end pens, but it's a little tricky to work with. It can be a little on the fragile side. And, uh, and uh, it has a great feel in the hand, though. It really does. It feels kind of warm 
uh, almost not quite as warm as ebonite does when it gets in your hand, but it, it, it has a little bit more of a nice tactile experience, I feel, than, than modern acrylics. Quick way to tell if your pen is made of celluloid, grab the cap, take a whiff. If it smells a little bit like Vicks VapoRub, chances are it is celluloid. It's got that um, sort of uh, camphor smell to it. So all in all, this is a neat little pen, and it's a very good writer. It's a little on the scratchy side for me, but it's a very good writer. So let's go ahead and do the stats. So you are looking at capped, a very slight 123 millimeters, and 108.5 uncapped. So it's, it's short. It's a short pen uncapped. Um, posted, it can be posted, and I'll post it carefully, as I have been. It's a very reasonable 139, and this, or 139.8, so 140 really. This is how I use the pen. I feel like this pen needs to be, needs to be posted to, to be comfortable for me. The widest point of the barrel, and the set, well, the section down here is about 8 millimeters. The widest point of the barrel is 9.8, and the widest point of the cap is 11. So it's, it's a very narrow pen in general, but man, is it a nice one. Uh, and weight-wise, let me just pull up the scale here quickly. It's going to be a fairly light pen. It is, a, it is a piston filler, though, so there's going to be a little bit more energy to it. So it's about 8, a little bit more heft, not energy. It's been one of those days, can you tell? Uh, 8 uncapped, and you're looking at 12 capped. So it's, it's a light, little light pen. Now, all in all... I said this is a great writer a couple times, and I mean it. It writes really well. If there's one thing I don't care for about the pen, I don't like this hooded nib very much. The reason being, it is so hooded, I often find myself rolling the pen. It's hard to tell if I've got it aligned correctly. Aligned correctly? You know, if I were less of a lazy man, I'd probably stop this video and start over again, but... As I've said before, I'm a lazy, lazy man. <laughs> okay, so enough of my stumbling over my words. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick writing sample, uh, show you how it is a lovely writer, and we will wrap up. So here we go. Today we have the Merlin Triumph with an a warranted... And I don't know what all this means because I'm not an expert in this sort of thing, but, uh, oh, excuse me, Osme 14 carat nib. And I got that information from, uh, from Mike, who lend, lent me the pen after sending it to Richard Bender and Indie Pen Dance. Uh, for it, this pen's been on a little bit of a U.S. tour, um, finding, finding, uh, uh, going visiting pen people along the way. And I'm, I'm sending it back to Mike here pretty soon. Um, but uh, so he told me it's a warranted Osme 14K nib. I didn't disassemble the pen, so I will I will just trust that he is correct because I can't see the nib from here. Um, it is an extra fine, at least that's what the barrel says. Although this writes more like a fine, in my experience, and the ink for this review is Shinkai by Hiroshizuku or pilot Hiroshizuku. Okay. And here is our quote. Allow me a little bit of editorializing, a little inline commenting there about uh, about this quote. 
I really like that. It's, it's uh, as we get older, sometimes it's easy for us to forget to dream to do big things because we get weighed down by the minutia of day-to-day -day life, and uh, it's always a good reminder. Do big things. Do great things. Dream about it, and uh, that's the only way they ever come about. All right, so as you could probably tell from the audio, um, which I boosted a bit, this pen does give a little bit of noise when it writes. It feels a touch on the scratchy side to me, and I've done absolutely no work on the pen. Um, that may be because it is such a fine point. It's not super scratchy, but if this were mine, it would make a quick trip along some micro mesh. It just it needs it needs a little something something there, um, just a little a little bit of love to kind of smooth it out. Uh, in terms of wetness. It's not the wettest pen in the world, but it for an extra fine line, it's actually pretty good. Um, you know, it's it's I'd consider it moderate, real moderate wetness. This is a pen that would be great to use with a nib that would be great to use on inexpensive paper. Um, because it's hooded, you're just not going to see much in the way of line variation. Um, so, um, and I didn't want to push too hard because it's not my nib. Uh, reverse writing, you can't really do it unless you write really high, which I don't write at a really high angle. So um, hooded nibs don't really lend themselves to reverse writing particularly well in my experience. Uh, but anyway, you know, this is another one. No problems with hard starts, no problems with skipping, no problems with anything really, other than the fact that occasionally I find myself rolling the pen unintentionally because I can't see the orientation of the nib from my writing vantage point. So anyway, that is my quick overview slash review of the Merlin Triumph. Neat little pen. You know, I have to say between the Merlin Triumph and the Merlin um, 33, this is a, a brand of, of little pens that I could see myself getting into pretty seriously here. They've got some great materials. They seem to be very well made. Um, the nib on my 33 is fantastic. The nib on this is a little bit less my style, but it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, just not my style. Um, oh, real quick, a couple of size comparisons. Here's the Lamy 2000, or the Lamy 2000, the, the Lamy um, All Star, which is the same as the Safari, same size as the Safari, and the Jinhao X450, so that gives you a sense of scale. They are quite a bit smaller than either of those pens. And, you know, and then just for ludicrous comparison's sake, here is the Pelican M1000 and the Mont Blanc 149. So, little pens. Well, that should do it for this review. Thank you, as always, for watching. Don't forget to head over to the blog post to see additional photos of this pen. Uh, and uh, I'm sure a bunch of folks are going to be running over to eBay trying to find an, a Merlin Triumph because they are hard to find. So if you find one, send me a picture. I'd love to see more of them, and uh, we will go from there. So thank you, as always, for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.